Hello and welcome as we go live with Kuala Lumpur's director and European citizenship expert Eva Hussein to find out everything you need to know about European citizenship and researching your European ancestors through the Aralson archives. Don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook page and YouTube channel where we upload videos weekly. So we're changing things up a little bit this week. We've got um, Eva here, who's usually interviewing someone, she's actually going to be talking to us about the Arlson archives instead. Uh, so would you just be able to give us a little bit about your professional background and uh, role as director and founder here at Polaron, Eva? Excellent question. And I'm not nervous at all, Stephanie. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I am a little because um, Normally what I do is I get people to talk. So when I'm sort of put on another, uh, you know, kind of on the spot, it's, it's a bit harder. But look, I've been um, doing this job for about 20 years and it is still a passion of mine, if I can put it that way. Uh, I'm very interested in everybody's story. And uh, although there are commonalities or synergies when you when you think about the historical background, I think everyone um, everyone's family history is very precious and we're very privileged um, to be able to discover more for people. So sometimes, um, you know, clients that come to us that want to pursue European citizenship know very little. So they might um, not even know the spelling of the grandparents' names or, um, you know, certainly don't know where they've come from, um, whether it's Germany or Poland or Czech Republic or wherever. So we not only um, help people reclaim their citizenship, but we also help them reclaim their identity, which is, you know, I guess a little bit abstract um, because, um, you know, at the time that our clients' ancestors have left Poland or Germany or, or the Czech Republic or Slovakia, uh, they were leaving for, for a good reason. Sometimes it was persecution, other times it was wars, economy, there was all kinds of reasons. And, you know, when they immigrated, really they focused on, um, assimilating I would even say so sometimes integrating sometimes assimilating so they had pressures of the new country of um, you know learning the language so, sometimes they were not allowed to go back to where they've come from so I, I think our work is um, twofold so one is you know to get your European passport which is which is of course what everybody wants in you know today's day and age but it's also about understanding your history because if you understand your history you can understand yourself better I think um, and um, all, all, all that I know has been learned um, throughout the years. I've always had a passion uh, for history. My, my grandmother was a historian. She was a school principal. Wow. And um, yeah, you didn't know that, right? Um, and um, as, a, as a kid, even, you know, I always used to read historical books, but it's not something that I studied formally. But it's definitely something I'm very, very passionate about. I know that everybody says that they're passionate about things, but this is my hobby horse and and my um, area of interest, but I also like to see how uh, we've learned from history or more to the point how we haven't, um, you know, if, you, if you were to ask me. Um, and I guess how to um, use historical documents, information to give people something uh, that connects them to their identity, that makes them uh, feel uh, European or whatever it is, wherever they are in that journey, in their life plans, we, we sort of fit in in those two aspects. But today, Stephanie, I wanted to show people um, the Bad Aralson archives, and it's a it's a very interesting institution. So I'm just going to share my yeah. screen and go right into it. Tell us all about it. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, and it is something that people can do themselves. So uh, the information that I'm going to be sharing with people today is 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 freely available. And as, as you know, we are um, the kind of people that like to share everything. Um, so um, who are they and where are they? So the interesting thing, um, this is the website and it's arolsen-archives.org. And there's so much information here, which I'll share with you, but just basically it's a database of um, information and documents documenting the Nazi persecution. Um, so um, it's got information about 17 and a half million people. So whether they uh, perished during the war uh, or survived, um, their information will be there. And it's not just for Germany, it's also for the rest of Europe. So I think um, their information goes back to 1933, but for the most part it's about World War II um, as well as post-war because people that ended up um, displaced um, in Europe um, that couldn't return 
to their homelands uh, were processed for immigration. So many of them went to America, Canada, South Africa, um, you know, a lot of um, um, South America um, destinations, but also Australia and New Zealand, of course. So what is it? Um, so it's, um, it's headed by the International Commission, as you can see there on the screen. And there are 11 countries that are um, part of this commission, and that includes Poland and Germany, Israel, Italy, Luxembourg, you can see this country in, this, in, in the screen, including United Kingdom and United States of America. So this board uh, or this commission makes decision around, decisions around um, the uh, Aralsen archives. And just a few years ago, a decision was made to make this available. So once upon a time, um, you had to make a special application and nothing was digitalized. So they've um, released it. And with um, countries such as Poland, they signed um, agreements to make this, um, these documents available. And here <clears throat> they talk about the legal basis for which this um, information has been uh, made available currently and what you can find there. Um, so since 2013, uh, the Federal Archive of Federal uh, Republic of Germany has been um, a, a partner of this particular archive, yeah. But previously it was managed by the Red Cross. Um, and um, in here you'll see a lot of information about the networks uh, that they get access to, etc. This is um, a 360 tour. Um, so if you go to this website, which I, I guess, again, I will we'll send you, you can go on a virtual tour of it. It's really, really wow. interesting. There are two um, two different things you can do. So that's one, and you can you can actually walk, uh, you know, uh, between the the files, I guess. And there are because they have two buildings here. There's uh, that's another one where we, where you can actually take a walk. But here uh, here they list what they have. So they they focus on three major things. One is documents created by the Nazi bureaucracy. And we're talking about concentration camps, ghettos and detention centers. Then uh, any documents from public authorities, from, from the governments and companies as, as, uh, as well as private entities um, to do with forced laborers because um, many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people were sent to Germany to work on farms and in factories. So they have records of that. And then um, what I mentioned earlier, the displaced people after 1945. Um, so, so all of that, if you go to this website, you, you'll be able to find, okay? Now in this tab, um, there's, a, there's an interesting um, exhibition uh, and um, first of all, they have a library and there's in this section that they call useful aids, they tell you exactly how to research um, the archives and I, we, we'll have a go at it um, in a minute. Uh, but in terms of uh, information on how to use the archives, it's all here. They have an e-guide um, just showing you the types of records. You can download that. That's a really comprehensive and well-structured document that shows you step-by-step -step of how to look for things. There is a library with more than 10,000 publications and 450 pe periodicals. So you can um, you know, uh, whenever we return to normal, whatever normal is going to be, you can actually go to this city. So Aralsen is, Bad Aralsen is a town um, and this um, institution is available, you know, uh, to anybody. You can make an appointment, you can go in and have a look. Um, and there's also an um, online catalogue and inventory to show you what specifically they have. Uh, the other thing I would encourage people to do is to sign up to their newsletter. Um, they have a strong social media presence on, you know, YouTube, uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, and also Instagram where you can, um, you know, find out more information about what they do. Um, here is the address and as I said, they located in Bad Aralsen in Germany and normally you can, you can go and visit. Um, so this is the e-guide that I mentioned, um, which, um, which takes you uh, through uh, what's what's avail available in, in terms of specifics. So it's a downloadable uh, document and, um, you know, it, it takes you step by step as, as to what, um, what you might have. And the other interesting um, section of this website is how to actually interpret the information, I guess is the way to put it. So uh, yes, you can get access of document to documents, but what do they mean? Um, so I would strongly encourage anyone that's interested and knows that their family records might be there, um, to, you know, to simply go through the website and they, they, there are case studies, 
um, there's um, like glossaries of terms so that if you don't speak the German language, like a lot of these re re resources are in English actually, post-war, but a lot of them are also in German. So uh, there's lots of historical background and frequently asked questions, um, you know, and all of that is, is available here, yeah. The other thing I uh, wanted to mention are uh, uh, online exhibitions. So they do have a physical um, exhibition. Um, and uh, as you can see, there are two separate um, sites. Um, that's why when I showed you the virtual tour, I showed you two different ones. Um, and those exhibition normally um, and reading rooms are, you know, available to, you know, there's information about how to get there and etc. But they also have uh, virtual exhibitions at the moment. So, um, and all kinds of campaigns, uh, which I'll, I'll also give you a quick, um, quick taste of, uh, but by all means, you know, ex you know, have, have a look at the website yourself. And uh, for example, this one, um, which I will, um, I think I've got it open already. This is honestly um, just so incredibly moving and heartbreaking. So this is a, an exhibition of, um, they call that stolen memory, but it's an exhibition of found objects. Um, so um, in 2020, um, on the 18th, 80th anniversary um, of the first transport of Polish prisoners to Auschwitz, to, to concentration camp, uh, they set this exhibition up and uh, found records for uh, people who, who, they don't know, they, they might know who um, the objects belong to, but they don't know who the people belong to. So they haven't been able to find family members that they can give this back to. And when you go through this, it's, it's, it's honestly just so moving and far, you know heartbreaking because people arrived in Germany with um, you know objects like this. Um, so somebody worried, so Boleslav worried on um, you know um, his religious symbol. Um, there are things like um, this. This particular one is a um, school certificate. So somebody took it with them, uh, you know, to. Um, um, I don't know, to, 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 to have something with them. You know, sometimes people keep them in their shoes. There are photos, as you can see, um, there are um, Polish documents. Um, so all of these resources sit in the archives, watches um, and, um, you know, pocket watches. So they, they know, as I said, or pens, as, as you can see here. So they know whose these objects are in terms of you know um, owners, but they haven't been able to connect them to people that um, are relatives or, or you know um, are able to reclaim them. So that's a very interesting um, exhibition. And by by looking at this, you'll be able to um, be transported in, in time um, and put yourself into the shoes, perhaps, of the people that were in those camps. Um, so that's that's like a massive, massive. Um, database of things that they they want to connect or you know that that's a ring for example uh and some documents there yeah all right and here uh they also have um virtual exhibitions at the moment and some of these um are traveling exhibitions so sometimes they take it um and you know this one's going to be in moscow for example uh, but there's also a lot of digital um uh, resources that that you can have a look at so i would again strongly encourage you and um, any webinars that they have held uh, you can find them on YouTube and and they they're just available there okay so this and there's also a fact sheet let me just make it bigger so that you can see so this this fact sheet uh, explains what they have and how to find it um, and uh, you, you can read specifically about what kind of um, records are available how to go about ordering them, um, who can order and what, um, you know, things uh, around privacy. But also if you're an educator, there are extra, um, you know, tools and um, all kinds of information there. So anyway, so that's um, what the archive or the website, um, just at a very basic level, because it's very, very extensive. It's a little bit, uh, I would say, clunky to use in places, but it's got a lot of information that um, if you have a bit of time, you'll be spending hours and hours there because it's all very interesting and very moving. Um, so I would just encourage you to go there. Again, it's rolson-archives.org, and we put that website in the comments there. Um, Stephanie, any questions about what I've just covered?
Yeah, I mean, it's all so interesting. There's so much information available, um, really good resource. Um, so how does this um, end up helping people gain citizenship? What a good segue into my next um, next um, next thing. So Perfect. these are the archives. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where you search for things, okay? And I, I'm going to um, actually share my own family story with you so that, you know, like a case study, I guess. But so in here, um, these are the archives. And, and, and again, there's lots of resources. There are videos, there are guides, um, and you can send your own inquiry. Um, so I, I should tell you that... Um, what I'm going to show you is digitalized, but not everything is digitalized because, you, you know, when we had a, just a quick look um, at, um, you know, at the piles and piles of papers and boxes, you can see how much there is. Um, so if you don't find um, your family in here, which I'm going to show you in a moment, you can send an inquiry through this um, and they'll, they, they're pretty responsive. And they can also send you what I'm going to show you in a certified format which is what you're going to need if you're pursuing European citizenship so most of the governments would require that in a hard copy with the archive certification but let me show you uh, the search um, function here so uh, and again it is something that I'll show you quickly and uh, it'll be my own story so I would strongly encourage you to explore it in your own time and um, you know it's a very rich uh, resource so but let, let me show you um, how, how to do it. So here, um, so this is my great uncle. Um, so I have um, two great uncles that are still alive. One of them is 95, the other one is 90. Um, uh, one of them lives in New York, the other one in Melbourne. And that, that is their names. And I'm gonna show you um, what, uh, what's available. Now, I should let you know that whenever you're searching, try um, to have this include synonyms on because the name that my um, ancestors used was also spelled like this. And sometimes, you know, through um, documents that we receive, um, there's like 20 different spellings of, um, you know, of the name. So if you, um, if you click that button, it'll come up with everything that you can, um, you know it's, it's kind of um, phonetic right so you can see that a lot of it is simply not uh, relevant at all um, but it, it'll bring up everything so if you're struggling uh, finding things so it's found 301 records so that's far, far too many so what I will do is is I'll unclick this um, button that says include synonyms and they'll only find things that are spelled exactly like this yeah uh, and um, it'll here it shows you the topics and what kind of um, records are available um, and you can click on show all, all results but let me um, let me uh, uh, why did it do that hold on 72 records show all results okay um, so um, this is my uncle. His name is Gershon. Um, and sometimes when people look through these records, is um, you know you'll have varieties of dates of birth, places. You know, some because you, you need to remember that all of this was created based on what people said, because they would have arrived, you know, in Germany. In the case of my uncle Gershon, uh, with no documentation. So um, you know, and there were hundreds of thousands of people, million, millions of people coming through those facilities and most of them were undocumented. So if you find um, that um, there's different dates, spellings, um, in information, it is because of that, yeah? But in here you can see, um, it's, this is definitely my uncle and his birthday is coming up in four days, so I'm, I, I need to remember to give him a ring. Uh, he's turning 91 and last year we were meant to have a really big party in New York for his 90th birthday and of course it didn't happen so we, we're hanging out uh, to go maybe next year. In any case here you can see um, this is uh, so a lot of this information is in German and um, uh, this was created uh, after the war. And um, over here you can enlarge it so that you can, you know, sort of... Um, um, make it a bit easier to read. 
uh, and the types of information that you can find vary. So you have, let me just show you some other things. And some of it, I, I, you know, I don't read German, so I don't know. Uh, but I've given this to my uncle and he was very moved. Um, he was liberated from Auschwitz. Um, uh, he, he was he went on a on a on a death march and he was liberated in Germany, I should say, at the end of April 1945. Um, but here you can see his place of birth, his date of birth, uh, and um, in a moment I'll also show you uh, a bit more information about him. Uh, some of it is not not filled in, so I like I said I don't know what that is. Uh, and some of it repeats, so they've scanned it more than once. Um, but I'll also show you, so in any case, there's 10 pages um, that um, you can download yourself, or um, you can also write to the archives and request it to give you a certified copy of. But let us let me see if I can find him again. Uh, okay, here he is again, and let's see what we've got here. Um, so this is a bit more interesting and it's actually in this case, um, you know, because they come from Poland that was filled in in Polish. So I'll just make it a bit bigger for everybody so we can see. Um, okay, so what does it say? So he, uh, you know, again, we know that he was born in 1930, 18th of May. Uh, we've got his parents' names. So it's Jacob or Jakub. We've got his place of the birth, which is Azorkov. We've got his mother's name, which was Estera, and um, that's her um, maiden name, except that it's misspelled and it's written in, you know, scribbly um, um, Polish. So sometimes we look at it and think, oh, what, what is this saying? But the other interesting bits of um, in information is that he put Argentina as his um, desired destination. I, I don't know why I have to ask him next time I speak to him I'll ask um, but people put all kinds of things on these papers maybe he was told look that's the only place you can go to or I'm not really sure what uh, mo what the motivation um, was I'll ask him and I'll let you know next time I speak to you but we've also got his last permanent address as at 1st of January 1938 uh, and we know that this to be correct we've got um, marital status we have religion, and in here they put Hebrew, um, meaning Jewish, of course. Uh, languages that um, he speaks, which were Polish, Jewish, which is not a language, and, and German. And um, he remained in Germany for four years, and he's still very, very fluent in German, which, which I, I find amazing. Um, so he, you know, like you can get a lot of information just reading between the lines and seeing uh, you know what happened and he, he was still a child so in 1945 he was 15 um, and then um, you know immigrated to, um, to to America eventually I think in 1949 when when he was 19 he ended up there uh, but in any case in here because the, the surname is pretty rare um, these are family members this is my grandmother's brother he ended up going to uh, to Israel so I'll just very quickly um, you know, he's no longer alive. He was born in 1923, uh, but, you know, it'll be the same place of birth, which is Ozorkov. So Wolf was the brother of these guys, these other guys that I showed you, brother of his father. Yeah. So the way that we are related, it sort of skips a generation somewhere there. Uh, but in any case, you can see um, lots of information here that you can you can use then to back up your claim and what this um, records are most available for uh, everyone is that you can use it to research further if you're stuck if you don't know if if you have very limited information about your ancestors what you see here is um, you know information created back then when it was fresh in people's minds so some of it is a bit confusing because like I said they were based on uh, verbal um, uh, statements but for the most part, they're very accurate. Um, um, so um, you can use it to, to um, research further. And I'll just show you this, uh, my other uncle, and I'll hand over for questions because I've been talking a lot. So this Aaron is, like, like I said, he's still alive. He's, um, he lives in Melbourne. And I'm going to visit him on Sunday. So 
hopefully this has been useful and interesting, but uh, the takeaway from all of this is that no matter what I show you, it'll not do as good a job as you having a go at it. So please um, go to the archives, explore it, search it. Of course, anytime you have any questions to us, feel free to reach out. But this is a resource that you can actually use yourself. It's free, it's available. So go for it. Over to you, Stephanie, for questions. We've got three minutes. <laughs> Great. Um, there's, yeah, you found so much information. It just must be so wonderful to see all of that about your family. Uh, if people are having difficulty using the Arlson archives, like they can't find the information they need, what would you recommend in that situation? Um, look, always um, get in contact with us, but I would also re uh, suggest that um, if something's not online uh, or if you are struggling with um, date ranges or spelling of someone's name, write to the archives because they do have professional archivists that their job is to look for things. And uh, what's available online is just a small percentage of what they actually have. Mm -hmm. um, so in any case, if you're looking for your family history I would or, or records, I would uh, see what's online and write to the archives nevertheless. Yeah, wonderful. Um, and how can Polaron help people with gaining their citizenship? Okay, um, so we work with, I guess, for the most part, with two types of clients, those that have everything and we do not need to do this, but mm -hmm. that, that's actually, I would say a small percentage, maybe about 30% of people are lucky enough to have records everybody else needs to find them. So what we do is help you um, put that information together and find those records. And something like the Beth Arlton Archive, which has only really been available um, to, to the public, not, not for that long, mm -hmm. is a treasure trove of, uh, of records and information that we then use to look for things in, say, Germany or Poland or the Czech Republic. Um, you know, a lot of what I showed you just quickly, because we've only got half an hour, um, gives you so much like even people's yeah. handwriting you know the fact that my uncle was listed there as a student i think they use the word, word pupil pupil so <laughs> you can you can um not only learn more about what they did and um uh you know who they were as people but you can also use that as a springboard to um to get other other documentation elsewhere um yeah. so definitely if you want us to do the work we we can but I always encourage people to be uh, engaged and involved because I think it gives you a sense of um, control over your own history and your own destination. Um, and, it, you know, mostly it's a collaboration between us and clients, um, particularly if we are finding the research challenging because, you know, some clients, so this is the second type of a client that comes to us, doesn't know anything um, or ha has no knows very little. Sometimes there are, you know, di dynamics in the family that, you know, prevent people from knowing because people haven't spoken about it, they were traumatized or whatever it is. So um, we can help you read between the lines is what I would say, or look at a document and say, okay, from this, I can see um, what's written there, but I can also see what's not written there. You know, what's what's not, not said um, and how we can use this piece of paper, this document that we find to further the research and to connect you to documentation any information that they can actually um, use for your citizenship. Yeah, thank you so much, Eva. It was so interesting seeing that documentation and learning more about the archives. So I know you don't love being on camera. So hey, but I'm good at it, right? It's <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I, I feel like I've spoken a hundred miles an hour, but <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited about sharing this information and just give it a go. Go um, and have a look at what, what's available there and write to the archives if you can't find it. Contact us if we can help in any way. Uh, and um, yeah, let us know how you go. Thanks. All right. Bye, Eva. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.